Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Holly Wharton. I've been an entrepreneur since 1999 and I know firsthand how difficult it can be to build a business without the right mindset. This is a podcast for those of us who struggle with showing up in our business with confidence and authenticity, who resist taking big action because of fears and doubts, who know deep down that it's possible to create something bigger and yet you're not. This podcast combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset along with practical business tips to grow your business more easily in a way that feels aligned. This podcast features solo shows with me and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world, including my monthly co-hosted episodes with Joe Casey. My goal is to help you grow your business more quickly and easily by transforming your mindset. For me, mindset work is a lifelong practice, and I want to help you make a habit out of mindset work. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, let's get into this week's episode. Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode 268. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I kind of changed the topic at the last minute. I was originally planning to do something else and realized I wasn't happy with the notes that I had made for it, so I think I'm going to expand on them and then do it at a later date. So today's episode, I'm going to be talking all about how to let go of things in business and life. This week's episode was inspired by a topic suggestion that I got a few months back, I think it was in the Facebook group, where someone asked me to speak about letting go of old stuff, people and things that maybe you've put a lot of work into and it's hard to let go of them. So To me, business and life are all about refining our priorities and letting go of things that no longer serve us so we can focus on the things that are most important to us. And this can mean letting go of any number of things, people such as clients, friends, family, or things such as products, services that you offer, income streams. Life and business are all about refining, 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 reevaluating, refining. And to me, letting go of things is a very important part of this process. So what will you learn today? Today, I'm going to talk about how to identify the things that no longer serve you and people that aren't right for you, what kinds of things you might want or need to let go of, I'm going to talk about how to know when it's time to let go of something or someone, why you might want to let go of something or someone in your business or life, How to identify the priorities in your life and why this is such a vital part of the letting go process. I'm going to talk about why you really need to get clear on where you want to go with business and life as a part of this. And finally, how to get the mindset you need to easily let go of the things that no longer serve you. But before I get into today's episode, I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on episode 266, which was the episode called What to Do When You Don't Feel Like Doing Anything. So you may remember if you've listened to that episode that I had a very, very lazy week. And that was really frustrating to me because I was out of the office all last week in Yorkshire for an NNAS Straight to Silver Navigation course, which I passed, which was very exciting. And then next week, I am away with visiting a friend. So I had this one week a couple weeks ago to get everything done between Monday and Friday. It was a reasonable expectation, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen because I just couldn't focus. And that was really, really frustrating to me. So in that episode, I talked about you know, being flexible with getting stuff done, how to be flexible with your calendar, how to get clear on why you're not being productive, how to understand whether it's time to give yourself a break or push through that lazy feeling. And I talked about why lazy days can be a symptom of burnout, which is what I thought was going on for me. So I did that episode. I sent it out to go, you know, to be edited and to go live. And then the next day, I had a working day in my calendar, kind of really my last chance to get stuff done before I went away to Yorkshire. And because I had taken some time that week to not get everything done, and I had allowed myself some kind of white space in my calendar, and because I'd given myself permission to, I'm going to call it being lazy, 
I'd given myself permission to be lazy, which is not exactly what it was, but I'd given myself permission to not force myself to get everything done. That Saturday was kind of one of my last chances to get stuff done. I would, didn't do anything except for recording the podcast. And then Sunday was really my last chance because I had a birthday on Monday and then Tuesday I was going up to Yorkshire. Well, because I had allowed myself to rest and relax, I got so much done on Sunday. I spent a big chunk of time clearing out my inbox. I got some work done with my husband. I had to study for my navigation course, so I did a little bit of that. Packed, got ready. I was super, super productive. Sunday of last week was like a work day. It was a really, really good, really productive day. And I think that's because I allowed myself that much needed time. I think I was heading towards burnout in some way. And allowing myself that week of not forcing myself to get stuff done really helped me to get back on track and get things done. So last week was, again, I was up in Yorkshire. I was using my brain. I was really focused on totally non-business related stuff. So it was physically challenging. It was mentally challenging, but it was different stuff from business. So I do consider that to be a break because my brain was being used for other stuff. So it was getting a break from business stuff. Came back yesterday and today, I'm, this is again Sunday, I'm recording this before going to Brussels tomorrow and I've had a super, super productive day. I made sure to time block my calendar. I readjusted it yesterday, added a bunch of stuff in. It's taken me longer to get through some of my emails than I suspected it would. That's fine. I've still got a lot of stuff to do that's fine because I've gotten so much done. My brain was really rested and relaxed and I was able to focus really well today. So it was really important for me to follow up on that podcast episode because I'd recorded it right after that really frustrating week of not getting stuff done. And I wanted to update with the benefits that I experienced of giving myself permission to not get all the stuff done. So if you're feeling lazy, if you're not focused, listen to that episode if you haven't already. And if you feel like maybe you're heading towards burnout, give yourself permission, please, to just relax and do whatever is relaxing to you. Maybe that's reading, maybe that's taking a bath, maybe it's going on a walk, going to the gym, whatever. Do the stuff that helps you relax. That's all for now. So I'm going to move on to today's episode, which is, again, how to let go of things in business and life. So how to identify things that no longer serve you and people that aren't right for you. I think as we move through business and life, as I said, it's a process of really getting clarity on the path, the path that we want to walk, both with business and life the things we want to experience, how we want to feel, the experience that we want to have. Part of that requires a really heightened sense of awareness, of really being aware of the things we want, the things we don't want, how we want to feel, how we don't want to feel, and what changes we can make to have the experience that we want to have in our business and in our life. It's very much a holistic thing. I know this is the Business Mindset Podcast. I talk a lot about business, but our business is a part of our life and it's really important that our lifestyle, that our business fit into the lifestyle that we want to have. So again, why might you want to let go of things and what kinds of things might you want to let go of? So as I said, it could be people, could be clients that no longer bring you joy, that you feel Oh, like you just can't bear to have a client call with them or do the work for them or whatever. Maybe you've got friends that you feel like you should stay friends with them, but for some reason they just don't make you feel good anymore. Or family members who maybe don't support you or don't make you happy. Or things such as products, services, income streams that you offer in your business. How to know when it's time to let go of something. I think one of the ways is it doesn't feel good for whatever reason. So maybe you've got a gut feeling that something's not right for you or just whenever you work on a certain aspect of your business or work with a certain client or engage with a certain person in your life, it just doesn't feel good. And that's time to take a look at that person or that thing and evaluate why. So as you're listening to this episode, 
Maybe make a note of things that come to mind. People, income streams, stuff that pop into your mind as you're listening to this. Write that stuff down so that you can spend some time evaluating. So sometimes people are really negative. I had this client one time that was really, really negative, and it was really challenging for me to work with this person. And they had signed up for a three-session package, and it was really challenging. I found it difficult to work with a person. I wasn't sure if they were finding it useful. At the end, when we wrapped up, apparently they had found it super, super useful, and they felt that they'd had really big shifts, and they really enjoyed it. And that was great. I, that made me feel good about it. But I was very clear with myself that I did not want to work with that person again, just because it was just so difficult. And it wasn't difficult because they were experiencing deep or difficult problems. It was difficult just because the person was so negative and just really difficult to work with. So if you have a client that's negative or difficult or challenging, think about why and think about whether you really want to continue to work with that person. If you're the per kind of person who does like done for you work, like graphic design or web design or that kind of thing, sometimes clients, especially in that kind of graphic element, can be really, really difficult. Just not giving you clear feedback and wanting perfection, but not being able to communicate what they want. That's really stressful. Do you really want that? And if so, are you charging enough to experience that? Could you let go of that person and maybe make room for a new client that might be easier? In the personal realm, sometimes people grow apart. That's absolutely normal. It's natural. It's happened to me. It's happened to everyone. As we grow, as we evolve, we grow closer to some people and we grow away from other people. And it's okay to just let go of those relationships. Maybe your goals have changed, your needs have changed. And so maybe you used to do one-to-one -one client sessions and your goal had been to fill up your client with one-to-one -one client sessions. And then you've decided you would rather focus on a group program or an online program, like home study program or writing books or something else. And you have different goals and different needs for your business. And so you decide to focus on those. And so you need to let go of other things and make space for the new things. Maybe you're living in the past and really kind of stuck in that kind of glorification of how things were a while ago, whether it's you know, a few months ago or a year ago or whatever. And, and you're not looking ahead or you're not looking at how things are now. And sometimes clients start out great and then it's time to let go for whatever reason. And that's the thing to evaluate when you're looking at things that to try to figure out whether something serves you or not is, are you stuck in the past? Are you evaluating this income stream, this client, this product, this service, this person? Are you evaluating your relationship with them based on what is currently happening or on how things were five years ago or one year ago or five months ago? But ultimately, do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy this person? Do you enjoy this part of your business? Does it make you happy? Does it spark joy? And that's a phrase from this book that I think was, came out in 2014 that everyone seemed to be reading back then, which is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying by Marie Kondo. And I'll link to that in the show notes. And that was about decluttering and tidying up your house. But one of the main questions that she asked to help you decide whether or not you want to need to keep something or let go of something was, does it spark joy? So go through different people and things in your business. Go through your client list and ask yourself, does this person spark joy? Do I love working with this person? And if not, think about what you can do to change that relationship. And that might be letting go or it might be changing the relationship in some way. In terms of products or services, does it bring joy for you to provide this product or service? And if not, what can you do to change that? Sometimes this uncomfortable feeling with business or with life can be a really good catalyst for you to pivot in your business. And I've mentioned R.M. Harrison's book, The Pivot Map, a few times on this podcast. R.M. was a guest on the podcast a while back, a couple of years ago, I think. And she recently wrote a book, I think it was last year, called The Pivot Map. And basically that is how to pivot in your business, how to take what you've got and shift it into something a little bit different and shift yourself so you can go on a different path. 
And sometimes that involves making big changes. Sometimes it involves making small changes. You don't have to like let go of all the things at once. You can identify the things that need to change and one by one declutter them, let go. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. And I think this is important. So when, whether you're decluttering stuff at home or people or stuff in your business, you don't have to do it all at once. You can do it little by little and declutter step by step in the same way you would with your house. You know, some people will just tear apart their house in one day or one weekend or one week and just go through everything and declutter. Or you could just pick a room and start with it and do one room each week or one room each day. And that leads me to the next thing that you can do to make it easier for you to let go of things in your business and life is declutter your house, your office. And sometimes by decluttering physical stuff that no longer serves us, it's easier to kind of get into the habit and get the ball rolling with the decluttering process. And that make it easier, it often does make it easier to declutter some of the scarier things to let go of. So if you feel uncomfortable, if you feel like you need a change, start by decluttering. Start with whatever room feels easiest. Start with whichever room you spend the most time in. Start with whatever room is most appropriate for whatever reason. Pick one and just start decluttering and get rid of the stuff. Take it to a charity shop. Get it out of your house. Again, by decluttering the physical stuff, you can make it a lot easier to let go of the scarier stuff that you need or want to let go of in your business or life. So declutter. Start with your closet. Start with whatever part of your house you want to start with. So as I said, one of the important things that you need to do in order to help identify the things that you want or need to let go of is to identify priorities in your life. And I have a really, really old blog post that I was reminded of when I was doing the notes for this episode before I got started recording, which dates back to December 29th, 2011. So I had all these blog posts that were based around these three questions that I focused on for a lot of my life, which is who am I, where am I, and where am I going? So who am I is helping you to get clear on who you are. I mean, that's an obvious question, but... The next question is, where am I? So where are you in your business and your life? So in this blog post, I was talking about doing a wheel of life, which is an old kind of life coachy kind of thing, and reassess things and look at, you know, where you are in each aspect of your life or business. You can do, I have a wheel of business um, that I had in my old online program, which I'm happy to email you, or I could just link to it here and in the show notes, obviously. So look at your wheel of life, look at your wheel of business. And look at where you are in relation to each area. So it might be health and well-being, social life, spirituality, money, that kind of thing. Different categories and you can adjust the categories to kind of fit you. But then look at each of those areas and rank them in order of importance to you in terms of priority. So one would be your top priority. And then if you've got eight sections, eight would be your lowest. So try to do that as quickly as possible. So like in your business, you would identify the most important areas of your business. In your life, you would identify the most important areas of your life. And again, this is the kind of thing to do really quickly without overanalyzing it too much. So rank each of the areas and then think about how you actually live your life and run your business. Like, is your number one priority actually your number one priority? Like if you say that, say, spirituality is your number one priority in life, Do you really place that into importance in your life? Do you make that a priority in your calendar? Do you meditate every morning or do your spiritual exercises or go to church or whatever it is that you do that is part of your spiritual life? Do you make that a non-negotiable part of every day or every week? Like, do your actions show that what is supposedly your number one priority is actually your priority? The things that we think are important, we don't actually make them important. So look at these things, these different aspects of your business, these different aspects of your life, and see whether you are actually making them a priority. Because oftentimes we don't, we think things are important, but they really aren't. And it's really, really frustrating. So looking at your wheel of business, for example, the different categories could be business growth, clients, giving back, integrity, 
building your network, visibility, whether your business is in line with your values, whether you have like business life balance, that kind of thing. You can change the different categories, but those are kind of some aspects of business that might be important to you. So identify your priorities in your life and business using the wheel of life, using the wheel of business, or using something else. Just brainstorm on what your priorities are and see whether or not you are actually making them a priority. And if not, why? How can you adjust? How can you pivot? How can you make different decisions? And then look at the things that are lower priority and see if maybe you can let go of them. Or give yourself permission to put them on the back burner. And I think a lot of this letting go of things is giving yourself permission to let go and to focus on the things that are really, really important to you. Now, question three of the three questions, who am I, where am I, where am I going, is also really important. So you really need to get clear on where you want to go with your business, where you want to be headed with your life. What does your path look like? And that's going to change. That's going to change as you do your personal development work and as you get clear on the things that you want to do. And it will require adjustments along the way. It might require quarterly adjustments, monthly adjustments, weekly adjustments, yearly adjustments. I don't know. It depends on you and what works for you. But get clear on where you want to be headed and then adjust the path as you go. But you need to be clear on what you want to go so that you can identify your priorities. So I decided that I wanted to focus more on my writing this year, but am I actually making that a priority? Eh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. I've got a long way to go with that. So I've made improvements, but I still have more work I can do and I still have things that I can let go of so that I can make my writing and my books a priority. Finally, how to get the mindset you need to easily let go of things that no longer serve you. Do the mindset work. Really get clear on those priorities and do use Psyche or other modalities that work with belief statements. Do some beliefs. It's easy for me to focus on the highest priorities in my business and life. I easily let go of things that no longer serve me. I easily let go of people that are no longer right for me. Do some belief statements that will support you to easily let go of the things that no longer serve you and declutter. I know that's like a physical thing, not a mindset thing, but decluttering physical stuff will really help you declutter the mind stuff. I think that's really, really important and really easy to do. It's so easy to just set aside some time to declutter the physical stuff. So identify what you need to believe about yourself in order to easily let go of things that no longer serve you. Identify who you need to be to easily let go of things. Identify what your higher self wants you to let go of and work on that. Create some belief statements and reprogram them to help you get the mindset you need to easily let go of these things that no longer serve you. So that is all for now. That was kind of a short episode plus the introduction, which was kind of the update to 266. I hope you found this useful. I think this is a good introduction into letting go of stuff. The mindset work is super, super important. As always, it, I think it just makes it easier for us to take action in terms of letting go of things. But a lot of this, like I said, boils down to you giving yourself permission to let go of things and people and know that it's okay. Like this is absolutely normal to pivot, to refine your path and to let go of the things that no longer serve you so you can focus on the things that are super high priority and important to you and that bring you joy. So that's all for now. I will be back next week and I look forward to seeing you then. Have a good week. Thank you so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for the topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and learn more about business mindset, join my private community for entrepreneurs at hollywharton.com forward slash group that will redirect you to the Facebook group. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you so much.